In this video, I will show you how you can update the BIOS on your ASUS ASUS Prime X570P. It's not that difficult, but you have to be careful with a few important steps. This is the Eon How To channel, and here there are more videos about how to do various things. And if you want to see videos like that, subscribe and ring the notification bell not to miss a video. To get the latest BIOS, I went to asus.com and there they have the support link. I will put the link in the description. The, the, BIOS, the BIOS I'm downloading and it's the latest one, it's 4021. And the version I have is really old. Basically, I never upgraded the BIOS on this computer. And once you unzip the, the file, you get the BIOS rename and the renamer tool that will rename the file .cap to the right short format. Then you get an old USB drive. Really the size it's, doesn't have to be a large one. You plug it in, copy the CAP file. All you need is to copy the CAP file, px570p.cap, C-A-P. Restart your computer and then press the delete key repeatedly until you end up in the BIOS, UF BIOS screen. Now here, this is the information, the details. The BIOS is 1407 from 2020. It's pretty, not very fresh, not very new. If you want to see the settings I use for my Ryzen 3700X CPU, those are the settings. And the easiest way to do this is through the easy flash update, the BIOS tool. Once you go to Asus Easy Flash Utility, you can browse the local drive and that's why you have the flash drive. It's the easiest thing to just uh, open the file. You select the file and you open it. Before you continue, you have to understand that if you use BitLocker encryption on your Windows, you have to disable it before doing this. So you have to reboot, go to Windows, disable BitLocker because it's using hardware keys and that would mean you would lose the keys because the BIOS, BIOS is reset here. And if I really want to update, it's asking me, making sure the version 4021 Prime uh, Prime X570P. And this is the board I have. And now it's starting, you see the bar below, it says processing. I speed things up here so you don't really <laughs> watch the, this bar for 10 minutes. But it took, actually it took a bit of time. It took more than the usual, so don't panic if it's um, taking longer afterwards it restarted and i was pressing the delete key to go to bios but it didn't really listen to my key so it had more things to do after the first restart once you do the bios update let it finish and for me it had uh, an update um, another update for the rgb lights i guess and this is why the screen went black, blank here. <laughs> I was pressing delete and worrying a little bit, I guess, a little bit. Uh, you never know with the BIOS, if you if the power goes out, yeah, you see, BIOS is updating LED firmware, do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system boot failure. Uh, when you do these BIOS updates, you have to make sure you do it when the there is a lower chance of having a power cut because a power cut during this process, depending on the board, might you might have to get the BIOS chip replaced. On other boards, they might have a backup system. I never tried with my board. I hope I never really find out if it has a BIOS recovery feature. And yeah, you just have to let it finish all the steps it's doing. And once it's finished, you can boot and it will ask you to change the settings because the first time you have to change the settings, all the settings are reset when you update the BIOS. So you have to know the settings you had before. That's why I went through a previous time and I looked at the settings I had and I wanted to put them back the same way as they are. Once everything is done, you change the settings how you like them. You can uh, open the task manager and see that the processor is at the speed that you want it to be and for me it is it's doing its uh, boosting automatic changes of the speed I like how I think it's good 
But if you have better settings for the BIOS for this processor and this board, please let me know in the description. I would like to have a better computer for sure. But without too much um, risk of having instability, I guess. I used CPU Z to update actually the BIOS settings and the test and everything. And yeah, for CPU Z benchmark, I'm not really doing the settings to increase the speed to the maximum. I just want a quick way to get the processor to work well without too much overheating also at the same time and keeping it stable, but also having a good performance. Why not? If you have any recommendations, please write them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and share. And I will see you next time.